In this video, we share five mistakes that we make here at our family workshop time and again, and suggest some solutions to these problems. So getting straight into it, our first mistake we make time and again is to select the wrong words. There's a couple of reasons for this. Sometimes we look and think, oh, that's a nice piece of wood. That's got a pretty grain in it. It's got nice character in it. Other times we see a piece of wood and think, yeah, that'll do for the job. As opposed to going and finding the right piece of wood for the job and just taking a little bit of extra time in processing a log or an old piece of furniture. It's a mistake we make time and again, a little bit of laziness creeps in where instead of looking for that best piece of wood possible, we use what is easiest and most convenient at the time. When it comes to the wood as well, it's always important before you start the job to check the piece of wood that you've selected over. From time to time, we might be rushing and we don't check it thoroughly and you might miss a split, a knot in it maybe, some slight little blemish in the grain itself, little things that you miss. And once you've started the job, it's too late. You realize too late and you've got a problem later on with your projects. So that's our solution to our problem when it comes to choosing wood, is to just take a little bit more time in the planning and preparation of your projects. The second mistake that we are terrible for making here at our workshop is wasting time during the project. Now it moves on from our first point where we're saying just do a little bit of planning and preparation when it comes to the woods. But again, do that planning and preparation when it comes to your project. Get your tools together, get your materials together, get your designs sorted out before you start working. It's amazing how often we start a project and then spend half an hour looking for a tool and then you've got to think again of what you were working on and then you're looking for something else. We waste so much time during the project. So similar to our first point, this one comes down to planning and preparation. Get yourself organized before you start and the project will go much more smoothly and much more quickly. The third mistake that we make time and again is using the wrong tool or machine for the job. This can happen for a few different reasons. For example, we've got the bandsaw and the scroll saw here at our workshop. And sometimes you're standing closer to the one or the other and you use that one that's closer in preference to the one that's a bit further away through laziness. When the truth is the other saw might have done a better job. Same thing happens when it comes to the pillar drill and the hand drill. You might have the hand drill available on the bench so you use it quickly as opposed to using the correct tool which would be the pillar drill. When it comes to the hand tools we do the same thing. Sometimes we use a tool because we know we've sharpened it recently. But there might be another chisel or gouge that is more suitable for the job but we know that we're due to sharpen it. So that's the thing is using the correct tool and the best tool for the job is a mistake we make time and again, but it's an important thing to get right. On to our fourth mistake that we make time and again. And you may be starting to realize that our big weakness here at our workshop is organization. And this one continues in that thread. Now, when it comes to the equipment and the tools and the woods, organization is key and it can save you so much time. And this mistake that we make time and again is not putting things back in the place they belong. We waste 
hours and hours every year searching for equipment that we've forgotten to put back in its place. So what happens, we're working on a job, we use a tool or a machine for that job and then go on and carry on doing something else. So if all of your equipment has a place that it belongs in, it'll save you time before, during and after your projects. So that's the key, is organisation. The final mistake is actually in a slightly different vein to the other ones. And this is to do with the sentiment that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So we've had a family workshop here for the last 50 years. And we know how to do things and we know how to make things in a particular way. Which is a good thing because you've got that knowledge and you've got that experience. The downside of that, it does make us a little bit more reluctant to try new techniques, new methods, new equipment and generally try new ideas. So that's a mistake that we make time and time again, is using our tried and tested methods as opposed to learning new ideas. Truth of it is, you can always learn. Every day you're doing something, there's something new that you can learn. And especially when you're working with woods, there's so many different aspects to it that you can learn every single day that you make something out of woods. To give an example, recently we've been exploring different techniques and different blades when it comes to our scroll saw work. So always be open-minded, always be willing to learn and always be willing to improve what you already do. So that's our solution to the problem of not being able to teach an old dog new tricks is just to be open-minded in learning new ideas that may help you out. There you go. Uh, those are our five mistakes that we make time and time again. Let us know in the comments section what mistakes do you make again and again in your workshop. Hopefully that is useful. Thank you again for watching and as always, we'll be back again soon with more videos.